maybe we can yeah oh uh, let me see maybe we can bother to start correct me pronunciation is not right uh Chang Wei Song can you understand this Chang Wei Song no Chang Wei Song No? No. <laughs> you see what I type in chat? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> see, see, good morning, man. Yeah, you, you said it? Can you? Chao Bui San. Chao Bui San. Neidu. Yeah. And the second is Neidu. No, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, right? <laughs> yeah. No. No. How do you say good day? Uh, good day is. Uh... You see what I type? Yeah, I see what you type. But but because of the Google Translate, so it's not that correct. It's I because I think that's Chinese uh, Chinese or French uh, translate to English is perfectly good but Vietnamese is not good so the Google translate is not not that good yeah. okay. so uh, maybe we can start yeah welcome everyone welcome back to Harvard CMSA quantum matter in math physics seminar series today we are very happy and honored to have uh, Zoom Yen from Brown University actually want to emphasize the way to pronounce his name. I think he, he can correct us, Zoom Yen. Yeah, I think that's just close. Yes, great. Yeah. And uh, also good morning to everyone. Uh, he will be, Zoom will be speaking about from fractional quantum hole to nonlinear higher rank symmetry. And uh, let's just directly welcome uh, Zoom. If you are uh, audience, if you have a question, you can Either raise your hand, so if you find appropriate, you can just ask directly. All questions are welcome. Please. Zoom. Yeah. Uh, thank, thanks, uh, Zuven, for invitation, and thank him for also for organizing a very interesting seminar series. From what I learned a lot, and so because I hide my uh, my Zoom control, so if you have questions, just interrupt me directly. Uh, I may not be able to see the chat. Okay, uh, can you hear my slide moving? Can you see my slide moving? Yes, yes. Okay, good, good. good. Okay, so uh, the title of my talk today is uh, From Fractional Quantum Hall to Higher Rank Symmetry. I try to show the connection between the lowest Landau level limit in fractional quantum hall with the um, uh, higher rank symmetry or the, the fracton story that uh, get a lot of attract uh, uh, recently. And the talk will be based on my very old work and also my current work with Sun and as a collaborator. And some of them belong to the work in progress. Uh, so the plan of the talk is following. First, I will uh, briefly review the Taylor scalar charge theory uh, proposed by uh, Michael Pretko. Uh, and after that, I saw that uh, uh, the Taylor uh, scalar charge theory in the linear version it should be uh, the same as the uh, area preserving deep as also linear order. We also like, uh, propose a, a nonlinear version of this. And I will use the lowest Landau level limit to uh, show some conservation laws that's the same as the conservation law of the scalar charge theory proposed by Michael Preco. And the second part of my talk, uh, I will show the area preserving diff uh, that uh, we consider the nonlinear version of this is nothing but it's a long wavelength limit of the W infinity symmetry. This seems to be also well known in, uh, in string theory. Uh, so let me begin. 
first part is a review of scalar charge theory. So we consider the higher rank dynamical gauge field with a symmetric tensor, rank two tensor gauge and this conjugate momentum with this uh, commutation relation because uh, E is a, is a conjugate momentum of A. So we have this commutation relation. Furthermore, we propose uh, some constraint. The first one is the Gauss law constraint. And the second one is a checklist constraint. So from the Gauss law constraint and this commutation relation, we can have the gauge transformation of uh, the symmetric tensor gauge uh, field. First one is the uh, Gauss law constraint, and the second one is from the chase list uh, constraint. So from this constraint, we see that the total charge is conserved, the dipole is conserved, also the trail of the quadrupole is conserved. So from this line is in, in any dimension, in any di dimension. And the second part, when I concentrate on fractional quantum hole, I will do this in the two plus one dimension. So now we can use this uh, second gauge transformation to fix the gauge. So we fix the gauge I, I, I equal to zero. So now we have this constraint and also this constraint now uh, not commute with each other. So we have the second class constraint. The second class constraint will modify the uh, commutation relation. Uh, and we need to uh, modify this using the direct bracket. And here is the uh, commutation relation after we fix the case. And we still have the, the uh, Gauss law uh, constraint. And from the Gauss law constraint, and this new commutation relation, we have the new residue gauge transformation of the uh, tensor gauge. Uh, so from this transformation of the tensor gauge, we can define the gauge invariant electric field with this form. So it's the same as what Petko Petko had in uh, in his um, paper. Uh, with the new field that we introduced is a uh, uh, time component of the uh, symmetric tensor gauge. And we also can uh, define the gauge invariant magnetic field is a symmetric tensor gauge theory. And uh, we have some uh, gauge invariant Lagrangian. First is the uh, simplest one is uh, Maxwell, um, Maxwell action. Maxwell Lagrangian that also discussed in paper by Petko. And in two plus one, we have another uh, gay invariant action up to uh, a boundary term, which is a churn Simon term here, which I not is a time component, and eight here is a magnetic field you find here. And this uh, action, uh, to, to my knowledge, first discussed in this paper by you and uh, ZZU and other collaborator in this uh, physical review research paper. Now, uh, because of the, uh, so because of the conservation of uh, charge uh, dipole moment, then the electric charge cannot move because when, when one moves the electric charge here, just mean you somehow like increase the, um, dipole moment. And because of the uh, concept of the chase part of the um, uh, quadrupole, uh, you also cannot, uh, so the dipole moment can only move perpendicular to this, uh, this, this moment. So yeah, so basically I finished the review of uh, the um, uh, basic concept of the symmetric, the JLS symmetric tensor gauge theory. Uh, any question? Okay, now I will move on. So, uh, uh, I will show that. Excuse yeah. Me. Can yeah. you say a bit more about the effect of the two plus one, the transcendent like term? Since you mentioned that, what's the effect? Um, so I um, I think that I may not be 
the right person to answer this question directly. But uh, in my talk, I just saw that uh, this will lead to the Wenzi term in uh, in fractional quantum hole when we formulate a fractional quantum hole using the um, using the um, uh, symmetric tensor gaze uh, formalism. So this is uh, uh, one of the, the consequence of this in fractional quantum hole, but not in Zendra. But I think that in this paper, uh, the author discusses this in, in, in detail. I think uh, Teresa is here. I don't know whether you can comment. <laughs> okay. So is there a, is there a level quantization for this transformation term? Or no. Uh, I don't. I don't remember on top of my head. Uh, yeah, I think I think in in the paper they discuss this. So in uh, in uh, in um, in I have the I have the answer for fractional quantum hole where this uh, the coefficient is is quantized and it give us uh, coefficient give us uh, the Wenzi shape the coefficient here related to the Wenzi shape of the fractional quantum hole and it's also related to the whole viscosity the quantized whole viscosity but I don't know uh, the gender in the Zender contact. Okay, and just make sure the Wenzi shift has some coupling to the geometry. Yeah, so the, basically, the uh, when you put uh, when you put the uh, quantum hole on flat space to have the same filling fraction, it's different when you you put this on a sphere. Horus. And yeah, and and the, the, the shape is just the way to see the difference between the number of, of electron on flash by or number of electron on sphere of the same fractional quantum hole, the same topological state on on flash by and on sphere. But but uh, where do I see the the coupling to the geometry from the term you say in this slide in the two part one D one D term? So basically, the thing is that in so this thing is uh, the symmetric tensor case um, uh, that's uh, that's uh, Petko discussed. However, to connect this to fractional quantum hole, this AIJ now will replace with uh, some 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 relation with uh, the matrix GIJ, and from that this edge here, you see that it's just a linear, um, it's a linear order of the the, the curvature. So it's like D I D J of S I J in the in uh, in, 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 in two dimension is uh, linear. Uh, it's a linear uh, version of the curvature. And when you do this, and you see that you vary it with I not. So the I not in fact is quantum more uh, now the same as. Uh, the background uh, scalar potential. So, so the variation of the A naught will give you the the charge. So basically, from this you see that with the churn Simon term in fractional quantum mode, you see that the charge will have the proportional to the curvature. And when you integrate over this, uh, the Riemann surface, it will give you the Euler characteristic. And at the end, that means the total charge. Uh, when shaped by the quantity related to the the when you ship is a topological number and also the you know, characteristic of the, the the Riemann surface. So not just on the sphere, but when you put this on on Riemann surface, and if you are in the fractional quantum state, then you will have the uh, the the HR, uh, uh, particle number. Proportional to the when you ship multiplied by the other characteristic of the, the Riemann surface. Okay, I don't have a more class, but uh, Ami has a question. By the way, if you guys want to show your full name, that'll be also very nice because people can identify who you are. But Ami, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, hi. 
Um, this is maybe a naive question, but why do you use rank two uh, gauge fields? Uh, when I think about electromagnetism, I think about vector fields, so that's rank one. Why do you use rank two here? Is so, this equivalent? Uh, no, it's not equivalent. Mm. Uh, so, so, so basically, um, this thing, so the, so the title of this section is Review Scalar Charge Theory. So, it's with to the fracton. However, uh, I will formulate this formalism into the, um, uh, into, uh, uh, in, in, in fractional quantum hall. And the following happened. Uh, you have the magnetic field is di, so it's like epsilon ij di up ij. So this thing is the magnetic field B, but you consider the transformation that keeps the magnetic field intact. That means it keeps the AI unchained. But now you can vary, uh, you can train the I naught and you can train also the mat matrix gij. So aij here. A, the symmetric tensor in um, in the fracton uh, literature can be mapped to the the metric in uh, uh, in, in in fractional quantum hall and a not here is still like the uh, a not in the the the, the, the gaze as a, the u one gaze so basically you have this uh, diagram so a not a i in g i j so I not belong to like to uh, to gauge. It belong to the uh, um, electromagnetic gauge uh, potential. But if we keep the AI and train to to fix the magnetic field, to fix the strong magnetic field, and you have this thing can be trained, then here is my background. And at the end, I will show that this AIJ in fractional quantum hole at in 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 the factor on, uh, literature related to the yeah is symmetric and related to the also now the symmetric tensor is the metric into the in two plus one. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Okay, so let's move move let's on. Make sure. So what you mentioned more about this couple into the space-time or this, uh, the, the, the spatial geometry more later, because I'm not sure I follow first the coupling, really. Maybe you'll say, but uh, in a 1C term, uh, I'm not familiar with that. But is yeah, there, so there, um, be, be, there, there was some explicit coupling to some like a uh, spin connection. Yeah, yeah. so basically you, 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 you can do this in the following. You can say that you have the churn Simon coupling of the background ice mu with the speed connection omega mu. And the term is nothing but ID omega. And then you can see that it's like a not curvature um, plus some term like uh, uh, I think it's omega i. Uh, yeah, omega i. So we have some term like a not multiply curvature plus uh, omega not multiplied by the magnetic field. Okay because you can have the curvature like d1 omega 2 minus d2 omega 1 in two dimension is equal to curvature. So this is the churn Simon term, the mixed churn Simon term of uh, background I feel and also the uh, spin connection. And this term gives you the curvature then basically when you expand this, you have the first term is the coupling between the um, so I naught and the background curvature, and another term we have the magnetic field coupling with the omega naught, and omega naught you will have like gij dt of gij. So this thing will have with some kind of epsilon coefficient, and so this thing will give you the um, whole viscosity. When it's like stress stress uh, tensor correlator, and the first term when you vary it with respect to I naught. You have the terms that proportional to the curvature. And then, so 
you integrate the, 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 the density from this term, you can have something like equal to integrate over the curvature. And at the end, it will be equal to the other characteristic with some coefficient. So that's why when you have the, the quantum Hall state on, on, on Riemann manifold, you have the term that proportional to the other character. Sure. But my question is that how is that related to the turn to write in this slide for the fraction type of a physics that you have this uh, symmetry tensor, the A0 HIJ? Because yeah, so so maybe maybe, maybe maybe it's come later because at the end, this thing will read to the, uh, the the matrix with some derivative. So this this term at the end when I go to the quantum hole um, version, you can see that this term is go to like e i e j of, of g i j, and it's the linear linear rise of this curvature at, uh, yeah. So you will mention more data. Yeah, I will, I will mention. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> so motivated by, um, by, by the paper by Senke uh, I will uh, show that uh, uh, the symmetric tensor, the scalar, the Chile scalar, Symmetry tensor is a linearized version of the volume preserving diff. It's the following. So uh, from the previous slide, if I replace the AIJ with something like the, the HIJ with this uh, relation, then uh, from the, the gray transformation of, H, of, of AIJ, I have the gray transformation of SIJ with this form. So at this step is nothing, but it's a rename, nothing fancy here. And now if you consider S i j as a perturbation of matrix with this uh, form, then basically the gauge transformation, the symmetric and the gauge transformation of a i j now look like you have the uh, diffeomorphism, the transformation, the diffeomorphism transformation of the, the matrix. And with this uh, uh, relation, so the, um, the deep parameter related to the gaze parameter in the symmetric tensor gaze with this form. And from this form, you see that the deep is uh, volume preserving in two plus one. So basically, you see that the uh, the gauge and the, the symmetric tensor gauge and formation now becomes the deep transformation, the linear version of the deep transformation in the with the area of preserving deep. So now we will promote this to nonlinear uh, um, volume preserving diff by saying that the, the transformation of the matrix has this form. So this thing is nothing but it's the, the full deep transformation of the matrix uh, with this uh, parameterization. Now, uh, this uh, transformation of the matrix will have the algebra in two plus one dimension. So, uh, here, this is, a, this is a transformation with uh, that's parameterized by, by lambda uh, with this form. Here, we have the algebra uh, such that uh, when you commute two transformation, you end up with another transformation, but with the uh, definition of the bracket here is, is this, this one. And this algebra is nothing but it's uh, area preserving uh, so it's, uh, the algebra of the area preserving transformation in uh, two plus one. So now is a full is a nonlinear version of the area preserving diff, and here is the linear version of that. But now, if you want to promote the the whole theory equal to include the a naught and a i j, 
or now a not an SIJ uh, such that the full theory have the uh, area preserving diff in two plus one, you need to train the transformation of uh, a not. Okay, so previously you only have this term, but now we have uh, an extra term. And from this, uh, the electric field EIJ will not change under the nonlinear uh, volume preserving diff. And so uh, from this um, nonlinear version, uh, we couple the background uh, A and G I J with the matter field. And so that's the variation of the partition function have this form. So we can think of this as a definition of the charge density operator and the shed uh, tensor. And from the nonlinear version of volume preserving deep, you see that we have this word identity. It looks complicated. Uh, and from this word identity, if you, you see that if we have a non, uh, non trivial background, if you have non non trivial a not in GIJ, uh, we only have the conservation of the total charge density, but not the conservation of the dipole moment. However, on the uh, flat background where a not equal to uh, zero and GIJ equal to delta IJ, we recover the conservation law that we have previously uh, from the Petco paper where we redefine the current, the symmetric tensor current and um, using the chest tensor. And from this definition, you see that the symmetric tensor current is automatically chaseless. So this thing is, you will recover the, uh, yeah. Zuven, you have a question? Yes, I'm worried one thing more, just- Yeah. Because the question is about, because it seems like you are really put into the curved space time. And I'm not familiar with the way to put it on curved space time for Preco's theory. Uh, maybe a more te technical way to say this is that it looks the way the theory Preco has also, I also try to work on and yeah. have some generalization. Uh, it seems like uh, to be more naturally defined on a manifold called Fi manifold that does not necessarily uh, have some Riemannian metric. But here, you are putting on curved space time with metric. And um, one, one comment, I'll just say, uh, yeah. it looks, you need to be careful. Maybe you, you already did, but just the comment is that, one thing is that, can you uh, see a bit more, but how do you raise or lower the indices? Are there some subtlety, or maybe that's just very simple, naive, natural thing that you can do? Uh, when you yeah. raise the indices, because earlier I wasn't so careful paying attention on raising the low index, but here you really try to do curve space time. Yeah, and so, so, I, so, I so. Think that they, are, are they really naturally those uh, fractal theory? Maybe people develop, but I wasn't fully. No, you, 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 you are right. You're, you're, you're per per perfectly right. I think that's no one. Uh, have a very good way to formulate the practical theory on curve space. Uh, the one very close, the, the closest uh, approach as I know is the uh, foliation uh, version of the, the practical theory by Kevin. But here uh, I, I, I'm talking about the, a different story. So I have the, uh, so, our theory is the uh, volume preserving diff uh, symmetry. And inside of this, I have the pred core, but only as the flash uh, background. So our volume preserving diff, when I put the background trivial, then I come back to pred core. So that means I do not, so, so the volume preserving dip is it, it not the way to, to formulate the, the symmetric tensor uh, gate theory to curve space. But I'm saying that the flash, uh, flash background limit of, of the 
volume from preserving is identical with PRETCO at also flat background. So the, the, the horn here is a volume preserving diff uh, transformation, and the inside here is a symmetric tensor gauge transformation in flat micro. So my, my, my task is not to generalize the Bretko version to Bretko theory to, to non trivial background, but my saying that the symmetry that we 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 interested in in flash bay is the same as Predco. Did I answer your question? Uh, let me make sure. Yeah. You try to say you still put on some maybe flash space or maybe what I say in my paper some alpha manifold, FI manifold. No, I you just, we, we you just deform. No, you just deform the coordinates. Is that what you're yeah? Yeah, I yeah, just deform the coordinate. But you didn't change. But 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 also change the, the background matrix. But my point is that this the, the the symmetry that I discuss here is not the version of the Predco in 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 in, in curve. Uh, it's not it's not the the symmetric tensor gauge theory in curve by Not the same thing. But I'm saying that maybe the here you can think of this. It's this another. Is this thing is a, a symmetric tensor gauge theory in general background matrix, but we have only like the overlap between the this thing and our symmetry that we consider is an in flat space limit. They are identical in flat space limit. So, okay, so, so I think that maybe your your theory is here. My theory is here. And we overlap at the, we have the, 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 the common, it's a flat limit of symmetry tensor gauge. Okay. Mm. Uh, can you state uh, what kind of a base space time manifold do you restrict on? Uh, it's a dalian, it's a non, it's a non, non retristic uh, 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 space time. Galilean space time had the time component and the space component separately. And yeah, new, new, Newton cut time. Uh, and um, can you can you have a curved local curvature? Yeah, we have we can have curved local curve curvature. So the space time can be can have a curvature. Yeah, space time can have curvature. So well, but but then do you also put a metric on the on the space time? Yeah, we can put the metric on on spy. Oh, on space. Yeah, on spy. Yeah, non uh, non relativistic. Yeah, on the spy. But, but, but you're not putting Preco theory on the curve space. Yeah, I do not put the Preco theory on on curve spy. I'm saying that in the limit of the flat space of our version of our theory equal to Preco in flat space so it did not break so our theory is not practical in curve space okay <laughs> and then then what are the sorry just make sure then what are the dynamical fields in your theory so uh so my in in in, in my theory when i discussed later right for, for example uh, the the matrix is certainly a background right Yes, yeah, so the metric and the ionic yeah, background. I have to make sure the big A is background or dynamical that you integrate. Is this also the it's also the background? It's so, also background. Yeah, so I not and GIJ is background. Right. But I can couple this with so in 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 my in my in my 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 my, my theory, the the matter field is uh, electron. So here is the charge density. And here is the chest density as the chest tensor uh, of the matter field, of the electron field. So the dynamical, maybe time dependent, and also possible, also space dependent, are yeah, dynamical the, things. Your inputs are the density rho and then yeah. the energy moment tensor T. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's, so, the, what's the full, maybe the, the, the action? 
or even the passing the ball, the theory, do you write it somewhere? Well, I, I, I will so. Huh? You won't? I, 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 will, I will present this uh, present in the okay. next, yeah. next slide. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So now I want to show that uh, error preserving rely in, in fractional quantum hall. So um, electron gas in magnetic field will form Landau level and the distance between the Landau level is a cyclotron frequency equal to B divided by the mass. B is the applied magnetic field and mass is the electron mass. Okay. And um, here I just write the, the flash, uh, flash um, uh, version of the action. And you see that when I take the mass least limits, when I put the electron mass to zero, the cyclotron uh, energy between different Landau level go to infinity. So in this case, we can zoom in on the dynamic of the single Landau level and forget about other higher Landau level. And we call this is the lowest Landau level limit. So here is a Lagrangian in, in flat space. And now if you define the coordinate Z depend on X and Y is a coordinate uh, of the two dimension uh, flat space. You can rewrite the action with this form with the new field uh, uh, chi. And the way you do this, you see that when you integrate out, so chi here has no, no, uh, no dynamic. If you integrate this chi, you can generate back uh, uh, the action. And the way we uh, introduce this chi because in the mass list limit, I can cut off the last term when m to zero. And chi now becomes a Lagrange multiplier. That gives me the lowest Landau level constraint on the field in the lowest Landau level. So electron, uh, electron field in the lowest Landau level satisfies the following constraint. Okay. And in the symmetric uh, gauge, where I choose this uh, specifically, um, the dz and dz bar here, this is for explicitly. Okay. And the lowest Landau level of Lagrangian have the following global symmetry that are consistent with lower, lowest Landau level constraints. So I, I need to make the delta size such that easy by existing need to be equal to zero. So that I, 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 I want to study the, the symmetry which is a variation of the electron field such that is still in the lowest Landau level limit that's uh, constrained by this uh, massless limit from the integrate of the Lagrange multiplier. So of course, there's one symmetry is a global U1. So from the global U1, you will have the conservation of uh, total charge. Okay. Okay. So so next, I if I can, yeah. there are many questions. Sorry, I, I have, I want to- No, of course, it's interesting. Yeah. First of all, you have this VDP, value preserving, sorry, VPD, volume preserving diffeomorphism, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just make sure this is a weaker condition compared to like angle preserving, right? Uh, this conformal is conformal. Uh, something is weaker than conformal. Is that is that a weaker one? But the input uh, conformal also pre also include this one. Uh, no, I think that is. Um, they are totally independent. I think they are maybe maybe they are related, but the conformal. Is they are they are they are related, but but the conformal not cover all of the uh, preserving deep. Right, right, but no. Yeah. Well, let me see. I think so, the conformal, roughly speaking, will be angle. Because, uh, because the conformal, you can uh, rescale. Yeah, I don't rescale. But rescale will change the, the volume. Yeah. So, so they do overlap, but the, they are not, they, the, yes, they they are not one or the other. And you are yeah. considering volume preserving. 
Yeah, and that's because you are considered incompressible quantum liquid. That could be the the, the physical motivation for that. And so that's your motivation. You, yeah. Motivation. Yeah, motivation for that. And another thing is that because now you are switching to electronic fermionic system, which yeah. has fermions. Yeah. But earlier the description of theory looks very bosonic. It doesn't have any uh, spinner of a many structure or so yeah imagine. yeah so basically so in, you, you, you which one then I wonder whether it has some intermediate in, in 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 uh, in fractional quantum hole when you apply a very strong magnetic field then basically spin polarize so you have to spin up and spin down but the spin up and the spin down have very different energy then basically in the in, in the effective level, you can consider the theory with the spin in only one direction. So it's a mass, it's, it's a, a spinless uh, fermion in this set. So. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, okay. Well, I think your point was something a bit more. You are saying that these are non relativistic spins, non relativistic fermions, and these are, it's more or less. Well, I understand it's more like a so, kind of, so, kind of... so this thing is a non red non relativistic yeah. fermion with only one direction of spin. Right, right. I, I understand that. And then you are yeah. treating them as some maybe boson or hard hardcore boson? No. no. We still treating this they, they, they still have the the fermionic statistic. Right. Yeah. Okay. Of course, in this case, uh, I, there's a version of this for for boson, and uh, this is uh, a co-atom uh, uh, rotating superfluid. Then you have the very similar Lagrangian, but but beside here now, just as a boson, and magnetic field here just as the rotation velocity of the, the rotating superfluid. Right. Yeah. Uh, one, one question is that you have fermions with some, you want global symmetry? It's a global yeah. symmetry. It's a and global symmetry. That includes a fermion parity, which means uh, X on the fermion was minus one on the fermion, right? It's a subgroup, a Z2 subgroup, fermion parity. Uh, so in this case, I just think of this as a U1 line, the U1 chas, the U1 chas, uh, when you when you guys it, you have the, the U1. Uh, Electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic U1. Right. Yeah. So, so, so you mean the U1 it will be gauged? Uh, so in this version, you say that it's a, it's a global, but but my my uh, but when you gauge this, you have the the the, the, the usual electromagnetic U1, the real Maxwell uh, U1. But but you will treat it as a a background probe or, or gauged. Yeah, but but I choose this uh, choose this is a global to have the the charge conservation. Right. So, so, the, you it, so you treat so you you treat it as a global, and you can couple to electromagnetic background. Yeah, yeah, but 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 the point is that as as I explained uh, previously, that I want to consider the theory that I fix the AI, so I fix the magnetic field. So 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 I only keep in touch of the A naught and G I J, but not A I. I keep uh, A I doesn't change. Right. I, I think that my question was trying to point out whether fermion parity is gauged or not in your system. A fermion parity which acts on fermions with all the minus sign, well bosonic setter will be plus one. And I just wonder whether this minus one fermion parity will be gauged. That, that's the question. Oh, like, no, I, no, it's no, not gauge. No. Yeah, so it's, not. it's from Yanni's system. Okay. Yeah. All right, fine. Okay, go ahead. Right. So, okay. yeah, so uh, you also have another symmetry because you are in, in, in magnetic field. The so usual translation will not uh, satisfy the lowest Landau level constraint. But you introduce. Uh, Magnetic translation with this form. 
So Q here is a parameter of magnetic translation. And with this transformation of the electron field, you still have the dz bar of this new psi here equal to zero. That means you still stay in the low Landau level. And the generator of this uh, magnetic translation in the uh, symmetric case have this form. And you can like calculate directly to have this uh, transformation. And from this uh, uh, this symmetry, this uh, global symmetry, you have the uh, um, uh, two uh, two not a charge for this to to conserve not a charge for this translation, which as a dipole moment. So we put this term here. You put B with this form. And then you remember that uh, few, our few in the lowest Landau level with this constraint, then basically you have this equation. And the other way for the, the B and B dagger, the two generator. So from this form, you see that our dipole moment comes up. And last but not least is the uh, global rotation where you just try rotate uh, the whole coordinate by uh, the constant angle. And from that, you have the conservation of angular momentum in the lowest line now level with this form. So basically, when you like, um, uh, combine three conservation laws so far, you have the conserved charge, conserved dipole moment, and also conserve the change of the quadrupole moment. So I show you at this point, the lowest Landau level electron theory have the same global conservation charge in the Chaley symmetric cancer case introduced by Predko, thus using the lowest Landau level constraint. Okay. So and- Quick question again, sorry. Yeah, okay, good. Let me just make sure. Uh, yeah. You are consider lowest Landau level, correct? Yeah, lowest Landau level. Yeah. And N to zero. Is there is there a feeling fraction you start with? So, what are the what are what are the way I'm thinking about the feeling fraction here? Uh, so you can have any feeling fraction that uh, uh, feeling fraction not integer. So basically, you you remember that we have the. Uh, we have the um, uh, Landau level, right? So if you feel all of the Landau level, then you have no uh, no dynamic inside the Landau level because you feel all of the inverse space. But if you have the, the feeling fraction is non-integer, then basically fraction, but you feel all of this level, but now you feel not all of the this level, then you still have the 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 uh, the free degree of freedom inside x Landau level, then anything not integer can be considered as the lowest Landau level, because uh, with the uh, cyclosome frequency omega c here and omega c here very large, you don't need to to think about the higher energy level, you only need to think about the dynamic in the Landau level that is partially filled. Sorry, you're just trying to say I need to consider the highest Landau level. You, you 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 just so the, the, the mass lead limit m go to zero. That means the omega c go to infinity. Uh, you agree with me, right? And in this case, if omega c go to infinity, and if my filling fraction is not an integer, it's not an integer, then basically I can go to the Landau level that partially fill and study the dynamic of this and forget about the levels that doesn't feel and the levels that pass as that, that fully feel. And zoom in on, on this. Let me just make sure the emphasis you try to say is to consider the partially feel Landau level. That's yeah, partially feel, yeah. So basically the lowest Landau level. Uh, it's just one one scenario to say the partially feel Landau level. Yeah, that's correct. That's fine, that's but correct. I have to ask more. Uh, 
but does it matter whether you have a even feeling function one over two or one over four or the yeah that's also belong to to this uh, to this story oh, you mean it doesn't matter both uh, your your work yeah it, it doesn't matter the the, the area piece of wings uh, for the work for the passive field land level no matter what uh, the the feeling function Okay. Okay. Let, let me just make sure. So you, you claim that there will be always such a conservation laws in the volume preserving diffomorphism with this constraint, then there are always such a cons uh, conservation laws for the quantum yeah. systems with any partial hidden fra fraction field. As long as yeah. you take uh, the limit that you have, the m go to zero and the energy gap, number level gap is large, yeah. then there's such a limit that you can find this conservable charges. Yeah. But so ba ba basically, when people say it is lowest Landau level limit, it's nothing but it's a single Landau level limit. It's a bit no, better. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But, but let me just make. But but when you derive, it looks. I just want to make sure how how is there some assumption there? It seems like a just one small step you take a G is equal to some special value. Is that the, maybe G equal to two or something? Uh, G equal to two. Yeah. That's just so, a, a scale that you choose, or is there something? Yeah, so, so I choose a scale z equal to two, so that z thing is come back directly to this. Agree? So basically, I, I, I just choose it equal to two because when I integrate out this chi, I will come back to, to, to this Lagrangian. Just only for g equal to two. But with the uh, with uh, so this thing is a conventional way to to do that, but with g not equal to two, you see that this thing is nothing but I shift my background gauge field because this thing is a couple with a charge density, right? If b equal to constant and g not equal to two, that means I just shift the background a not with some constant, but the constant is not not uh, it's not something like uh, that, that, that is a constant, the I not will equal to some like some, some G minus two and multiply by B divided by, by four M. So because this, with this constant shift, I, 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 I don't like this because when I take the M go to zero limit, that means I shift the background I not to infinity, but, but that's fine. So I put G equal to two just to, to make the, the, the consistent way to, to take the massive limits. But when the G is not equal to two, you just shift the chemical potential. There's no, you, you shift the, the whole system with the chemical potential. There's no, 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 no physical trouble with that. What, what's special about G equal to two? Can you just uh, rescale the way you define magnetic field or mass? Just you can take arbitrary G. Why is, no. it, why is this G spatial? I'm not sure. Special. So basically, from this thing, when I put it back here, when when I in, integrate out this kind, you will then raise the, the commutator, the extra term with the commutator dz dz bar. This term and is the dz dz bar equal to b? Uh, so you, you you generate this term per side angle per side when you integrate this out, and basically it will come back to so when you integrate it chi out, you come back with this term and plus some term that proportional to the commutation duration of dz and dz bar. And this commutation duration is just b, and basically I want to 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 make this commutation duration. Cancel with the extra term that I that I put in. So that's uh, the action has exactly this form without an extra without an extra term. In this because of this form, I don't have the m in the denominator, and it takes the mass state limit by this is equal to zero. So now at this point, chi becomes the Lagrange multiplier that gives me the lowest Landau level constraint. Uh, right. Let, let me just make sure. So these are derivation. Let's go back to the uh, physics story. So you have some uh, 
non-relativistic non -relativistic fermions of psi, which is a physical one, and there are some mm. maybe uh, Lagrange multiplier chi field. Yeah, I just go to take a limit for n go to zero and uh, e is large. Yeah, and you also include the interaction term between those fermions. Yeah, you can and, also. And then, and then under what the conditions, also about the under the condition of volume preserving diffeomorphism. So, so basically, to have the so you see that I have the U one global uh, symmetry, and I have the magnetic translation, the, the global magnetic translation, and the global rotation. So the condition that the interaction here is invariant under the the global translation and global rotation. So basically, I just say that my theory is symmetric, interaction is symmetric under the the the, the full the global translation. And also rotational symmetry. That is a, the condition. So the, the, the this part is perfectly good with the global symmetry that I consider. So the only the interaction is rotational symmetry and translation invariant, which is I think that is good enough uh, assumption. Oh, sorry, just me. You you also say spatial rotation. Yes, yeah, spatial rotation. So this this is the oh, oh. the, the spatial rotation. You rotate the coordinate, right? Okay. Yeah. No so, so so basically, the global translation and global rotation are the only um, global area preserving it. Right. No problem. Okay. Then, yeah. then let, let me make sure one more thing. How about I change to relativistic fermions, and also I can have have a lambda label for that system. Does that change anything? I can possibly also impose rotational symmetry and additional conditions. Can I derive the same result? Uh, so for graphene, you you still have this because the distance between the lambda level is still, still big. Um, and you still have this kind of conservation for the lowest lambda level limit. Um, but uh, but let let me keep this uh, the non non relativistic uh, version because graphene also not 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 relativistic because it's also like non relativistic. But for the here we the way we do this because we we consider the Galilean uh, Galilean geometry we can separate the time component and. And spy components. So, so let's keep it. Let let us keep it as a non-relativistic version only. Okay. Thank you very much. Please keep keep going. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, mm -hmm. question: the the fact that you have conservation of charge does yes. directly apply the conservation of polarization and quadrupole and so on? Because in a no, no. Well. Mm -hmm. One can write charge as the gradient of electric multiples. So as soon as you have a constraint on charge being time independent. So no. So if you if you have to use your Gauss, if you have to use your Gauss law, bro, then basically you don't have the, the conservation of dipole. If you have the so in the symmetric tensor case theory, you have the from this conservation dipole because you have the row row dot equal to two derivative eij. This is a new new field. When you have the two derivatives, then you have the conservation of, of dipole. If you have only one derivative from the usual Gauss law, you don't have the conservation of dipole. Because of course, when you have the dipole conservation, when the charge plus move to this position, is nothing but you create the the dipole. So, so in the in the, the theory with the conserved dipole, your charge cannot move. But in the usual uh, electromagnetic um, um, theory of the electron, electron can can freely move, so it cannot conserve the. And that's a consequence only of your. That's a consequence of your gauge fields, right? If, if gauge fields were not there, it, it is a consequence of the. the... Sure. Okay. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So.
Now I derive this, uh, the word identity in the different way. So basically you have the, you want symmetry for the, for the electron in, in the matter. So this thing is a electron in, in matter. But here I have the extra term, extra, extra conservation law, which has a conservation of momentum uh, with the particle in magnetic field. So now this here, nothing but is the momentum density. But however, if I take the mass least limits or I take the single Landau level limit, then the momentum density equal to zero. So that means from this equation, I can show the current in terms of stress tensor and put it back to this um, um, continuity equation. Then I have this conservation law, where the Jij here related to the stress tensor. And basically this conservation law can only happen in the mass least limit m to zero on lowest Landau level. Okay. So basically now I show you another way to see the, the lowest Landau level limits helps the, the very strange conservation law with this form. And this thing is nothing but the conservation law of the Chalet symmetric tensor gauge theory by Pretko. Okay. Uh, maybe I skip the slide. Uh, no, no, don't, no need to sleep. I'll skip. You can just take your time, really. But let me ask, what, what, where is the symmetry tensor, the big one gauge field, I suppose, right? Now it's big. Yeah, so, 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 so I have the A0. Where the layer rise from the impression of Remember, you, you have the A0 and GIJ. The background here. So this thing is a, is A0, give you the, the, the density. And GIJ give you the coupling with the stress tensor. This G here is nothing but it's reformulated from the stress tensor. So background is I not and GIJ. But, but how about those uh, symmetric tensor of AIJ? Do they show up? So yeah, it will show up. It will show up. And it's related to GIJ. Okay. Yeah. And you will show us. Yeah. So basically, actually, I, I already show in, in this uh, in this slide uh, here. So so if I define the perturbation of matrix related to the symmetric tensor gaze, then basically uh, you can reformulate the symmetric tensor gaze uh, transformation by the transformation of the, the matrix itself. So the delta of AIJ will go to the delta of AIJ and go to the delta of GIJ. Is this clear? Uh, yeah, I understand your point. But mm -hmm. I don't, it looks which are more physical degree freedom, maybe different, for example, in the Symmetric tensor gauge theory. Uh, so, so the, uh, the that's theory. AIJ is more physical to think about, but uh, here you are using GIJ, and there are some way to transform between HIJ to AIJ. Yeah. So the physical group is more GIJ, but uh, you, you say there's a way to relate to AIJ. Yeah, so basically from GIJ, I can come back to get the AIJ, and I can come back to the AIJ. So the transformation, the, the area preserving area preserving the transformation of GIJ, I can come back to the, the gauge transformation of AIJ in practical theory. Right, yeah, but I was, uh, maybe I'm asking, are there also physical degree of freedom or understanding where are those AIJ, other than just saying there's a transformation between variations? Yeah, so the, 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 the so, so in, 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 is a theory that that we consider AIJ and and 
AIJ and ANOC or AIJ and GIJ has a background, so you have no dynamic. But the dynamic of here is the electron, and electron, the dynamical electron has the dynamical charge density and the dynamical uh, stress tensor. So our dynamical degree of freedom here come from electron. But AIJ or GIJ and a not uh, background. You, you, you just think about the same way when you think about like Maxwell field has, is a background I to prove the, yeah, yeah, same thing. Okay, so here is the Newton Cartan uh, formalism, is a Newton Cartan formalism when you couple the non relativistic electron uh, with the background. And here is this uh, formalism, the transformation of the um, the background gaze field and background matrix under the deep with this form. It's not the same as when you do this in the, the, the relativistic version or in GI. Not, not, not identical. Uh, however, in the, when you take the, the lowest standard level limit when m goes to zero, then you, you, you get away this term. You also have the U1 gauge transformation, the usual U1 gauge transformation. Now, if you propose a area, so this thing is a zendo dip, but you propose a area preserving dip with this form. And now we also choose a U1 gauge transformation that related to the area preserving dip with this form. Then you see that delta AI doesn't change. Sorry, it's equal to zero. Equal to zero. But you see that the transformation of I0 and GIJ here is nothing but it's a non linear version of the area preserving dip, the volume preserving dip that I considered previously, where I non-linearize the, the symmetric tensor gauge information. Question again, sorry. Uh, first yeah. of all, I'm not familiar, but you also may not be familiar. Uh, what, what exactly is the, the essence of this newton cartan formalism? Is that the uh, analogy to this uh, einstein cartan for the general relativity? Yeah. You write, is, uh, is, you write uh, some metric in terms of some field by yeah, some view back. And, yeah. But here, here then, you are doing the non relativistic version, so you replace uh, relativity to uh, maybe Newtonian or Galilean type of system. Is that? Yeah, the, Galilean type system. Yeah. But then, where do I see the these uh, field buying or tetra that type of things? I, I didn't. So, so, so the so the the view by have something. You have the the G I J equal to delta A B. E A I E B J. So this thing is a view bar. Yes, but the, not in the in the three equations you show. Do not. So the, the view bar in G here, right? Oh, but, but I'm not sure. But but then anyway, maybe maybe that that's not the the main point of these three equations. Yeah. But uh, there's no view bars in that equations. And I, what do I need? Do I require any? Formalism, formalism, like uh, in these transformations, I, I don't see any special thing. No, I think that you 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 can either way think about this in terms of metric or in terms of view by that that's fine. Okay. But but maybe when you go to 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 this paper by by CERN, I think that you is this paper he describe in detail how to contract the, the, the newton cartan to couple the non relativistic uh, electron with background in, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And here you have the, yeah, so the, the punch line of this line is just... Uh, okay, but, but you also have a crossing, there's one of the radar uh, red line across the term 
what can you just read can you just so, say what you, what's what's there so basically you when you when you do the the deep transformation and in the newton cactan paper my son you have the extra term this term is not it's not there when you do the the, the gr version because ai transform as the the one form right and if ai transform as the one form then you don't have this term but when 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 you go to the newton cactan formism the system is it's not there I, it, this term is there but when I take the lowest Landau level limits, when the mass go to zero, then basically I, 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 I can get, get out, I can get away of this stuff. And now I, I, the, the past line is a, the final the transformation. So if you consider the, the relativistic version, then you don't have this stuff. The Newton Cartan formism will have this term, but can M go to zero limit, I get away, I get, get, get rid of this term. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure last thing, maybe maybe it won't have some comment or something. But let, let me ask. So this transformation are some type of a diffeomorphism transformation, which can be think about some uh type of kind of gauge transformation, but for the space height, right? Yeah. Coordinates. Yes. But yeah. You write these three equations, there should be a gauge invariant or diffeomorphism invariant for some theory. Yeah, so if you if you allow the the dynamical field is uh, if you allow the, the 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 electron field transform and you also allow the background field transform, the, the full action is invariant under this transformation and it's called it is gauge. Right. Yeah. And and these are the infinitesimal transformation yeah even if this much information okay mm. and i think that these are just one of the these are probably just the only choice right it's not the these are should be natural that once you write down the full theory then one can check this will just yeah. be one of the yeah yeah so the the the, the, the full theory of this thing is you need to couple the non non-relativistic electron with mass m with the background the problem yeah, yeah. yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I have the question from uh, uh, Edward, but uh, yeah, I think that I, I need to think about your question. I don't have to answer right away. Sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, so we have the transformation of, of Gij here, transformation of A naught, and the linearized version of this is nothing but it's a practical transformation of uh, symmetric tensor gauge, where we define the A again in terms of Gij and in terms of Gij. And basically you come back to, to this. And uh, uh, remind you again the the gay invariant field strength with this form. Yeah, so the consequence of this uh, of this uh, uh, invariant that I discussed previously, yeah, again, it uses this conservation with the uh, uh, chase path is a chaseless uh, current and. Uh, Furthermore, remember the, the Chen Simon term that uh, ZZ uh, written down with uh, as a collaborator with this form. And when you uh, uh, write this uh, HIJ um, in terms of uh, uh, small GIJ, uh, this HIJ is nothing but it's a linear version of the uh, Riemann curvature, the scalar curvature, that's the linear order. So basically, this Chen Simon term of the symmetric tensor gauge that GG written down is nothing but it's a li linear version, it's a quadratic order of the 
uh, when G. So, so from this thing, you see that the, you remember that this term is uh, the when G shape. So when you put the system on the curve manifold, it changes the, the charge density. And the second term here is nothing but it's a whole viscosity. So basically, because of the uh, uh, higher rank symmetry, you nail down the ratio between the between the when you shift and the whole viscosity is nothing but it's the ID omega term that when the term in infection of quantum world. Okay. Yeah, so the second part of my talk uh, is I am trying to show that uh, the, the area preserving deep that I have in this, uh, that I, I present previously, is nothing but it's a long wavelength version of the W infinity and zebra, the well-known and zebra in the lowest Landau level, and also in string theory. And it's also, there's also using this, also the way to reformulates the theory of the lowest and down level to the non commutative one, but I will not go to this direction, but let me just concentrate on the area preserving deep. So here I remind you again, some operators, the single particle operator in the lowest and down level. So I and I dagger is nothing but it's dz by and dz. In the Hamiltonian, you can written in terms of this, uh, I dagger I. And now remember again the magnetic translation operator here. They are commute with I and I dagger. That means they are commute with the free Hamiltonian. And the so I and I dagger here is operator that rising and lowering the Landau level. So that means if B commute with the rising and lowering Landau level, then one of the operator con contract from B and B dagger will act within a single Landau level. Yeah, so here, one of the operator acting within a single Landau level with this, with this form. And because of the commutation duration of B and B dagger here, you have the algebra of this uh, operator, which is nothing but this W infinity algebra. It's look complicated, but it can be calculated directly from the commutation duration of B and B dagger. And W infinity uh, include infinite number of generator. Uh, you can run the N and M. And the W infinity is a global symmetry of the free Hamiltonian in the lowest Landau level limit. So that means when you act the and uh, when we only have the free Hamiltonian, then all of this uh, operator, all of the generator of the W infinity are commute with, uh, with the free Hamiltonian. So it's a global symmetry of free Hamiltonian. Okay, and we can also contract the few operator in the low standard level limit. So we know the single Landau level wave function with this form. So that's the uh, action of this uh, equal to zero. So that means it's the lowest Landau level constraint satisfied. And you can think of this uh, phi m is the wave function of the orbital with index m in the lowest Landau level. And here is a field operator contract from the wave function. And I here is a fermionic operator with a fermionic statistic. And because we project to the lowest Landau level, so the lowest Landau level electron field, so basically you, you can think of like the psi x, psi you know, y. If you don't have the lowest Landau level constraint, then it will go to the delta x minus y. But here, because of the lowest Landau level constraint, it will have the lowest Landau level projected delta function. So basically, you can think of this as the electron doesn't have a, a sharp position because it's go in the cyclotron orbit, go to the cyclotron orbit with the finite side. So that means the commutation, the anti-commutation duration of the lowest Landau level fuel operator doesn't have the 
delta function uh, as uh, in the free theory. Uh, yeah, so you can use this uh, lowest Landau level delta function to project any function to the lowest Landau level by this integral. You can show that because of this, uh, using the property of this integral, uh, this function will be the lowest Landau level function where you act the DZ bar on it to get zero. And I just mentioned some useful relations that we will do later for completeness, but it's easy to do, right? Okay, so I think that is an interesting part of my talk. So when you consider the U1, uh, U1 transformation of uh, uh, a few, so like D plus psi equal to I of some function D plus psi, you think it's infinitesimal gauge transformation. But this transformation now is not lowest than our level with the arbitrary function. So to, to project this to lowest than our level, you, you do the, the you, you use the uh, uh, lowest Landau level then uh, delta function, direct delta function. Yeah, so there is nothing but is a projected of the U1 transformation to the lowest Landau level. And well, I call this is a projected U1. Okay. And from the U, when we use a useful relations that I, I, I I mentioned previously, you can show that with arbitrary function, the lowest Landau level projected of this U1 transformation is nothing but you replace the Z inside uh, this function by B dagger and replace the Z bar by B. And after that, you do the anti-normal ordering where you put all of the B to the left and B dagger to the right. And here is the consequence of the projected, lowest Landau level projected U1, okay? So there's an in, interesting observation. All of the lowest Landau level projected U1 transformation can be contracted from the generator of the W infinity, since the function uh, here can be written with this form. And so basically the lowest Landau level projected U1 is equivalent to the W infinity. Okay, question. Yeah, um, sorry, I have a question on the previous slide. Yeah. Yeah, so in the um, uh, lowest Landau level projected uh, transformation here, you have, you projected out uh, Z prime, but what about Z prime bar? So the thing is, you see that this is 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 depend on z and z bar. The 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 lowest land level depend on z and z bar because the z bar come in the uh, square. So in the wave function that I present. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying like shouldn't shouldn't you project out the z bar prime as well? Because here you have a projection. Uh, here I, I integrate over, yeah, sorry, I, I, I yeah. yeah, integrate over the, the prime and to get. Yeah, what about Z bar prime? You, you so, don't. So I, 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 D, so DZ, 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 DZ bar, D square Z prime. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, I show you the lowest Landau level uh, variation of the dynamical field. And using the Yusun relation, we show that the generator of this transformation is nothing but this equation where Psi L here, uh, where, where, where the rho L here equal nothing but Psi L, Psi L. You just use uh, the commutation tracing of the psi 
and also use the UFUN relation we saw that this generator will give you the transformation. This uh, generator of the projected U1 transformation. Okay. And from also using the useful, uh, then uh, useful relation, you saw that the, the generator satisfies this uh, and zebra. Where this uh, bracket is my bracket. Oh, sorry. Now, no, no. okay. To make a search in the world. If you feel too bothersome, you can say you, you don't you don't need to answer anyway. But, uh, but uh, sorry, you are choosing uh this uh, uh z coordinates for the the field decomposition of the star so, L to mm -hmm. by by L. But is there uh, are you necessarily imply there are chiral edge modes on the boundary for the theory? Uh, no, no, no. Or can no. you have a zero carousel charge as well for the theory? I um, think that that I'm I'm not I'm not consider this. I'm not consider this. Is that is that true? Z and Z bar here in this in this talk, Z and Z bar here is nothing but it's uh, the the coordinate. Right. That's but, uh, the way right. to rewrite the coordinate. I th well, I think there's one slide about this uh, lowest Landau level fuel operator, and then maybe you only choose the Z, not the Z bar. I was just wondering whether the system necessary have a chiral central charge, or it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, but in this fuel operator, maybe a one. The, so, so basically, the, the Z and Z bar here, the true of Z and Z bar here, depend on the direction of the magnetic field. So when you switch the direction of magnetic field, Z will go to Z bar. Z will need to go to Z bar. And basically, uh, it's related to the to, to, to the chiral mode at the edge, related to the direction of the chiral mode at the edge, but it's not right. it out of the, the, the scope of this it talk. OK. The system can have a zero chiral recharge, right? Your system uh, can have a zero chiral recharge, right? Actually, no, no. You when when for example when you have the when you have the the for example the the uh, Laplin state one third Laplin state then you have the the current mode on the edge. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I'm asking whether your theory also describe system with zero chiral central charge. Basically, that's the question. The one third feeling fraction one third has chiral central charge. I suppose also chiral central charge one, but I. I, I I ask whether your theory also describes zero chiral central charge state. Uh, or only only with chiral central charge. So in this case, I only consider the theory uh, is the lowest. I mean, in the single Landau level, and I think that the pH five field state also can be yeah, can be in this uh, in this theory. And right, in the PS five field, then you have the two chiral also have a chiral center charge, also, yeah. one, also some one half or some one half plus on integer chiral center yeah, charge. Yeah, yeah. But, but I was asking, do your theory also describe non chiral with zero chiral center charge system? Maybe it's not so important. I, but I yeah, I think that so this question is on top of my head. Okay, no problem. Okay, okay, okay. thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here is uh, the thing that I call the charge density and zebra. And this thing is the Moyer product. This is from, it looks complicated, but it's well known in when people do the non commutative field theory. And now you see that the choice of the, the generator depends on the choice of the, the function. So if I choose a function with this form, then the charge density and zebra give me nothing but it's a GMP and zebra. Okay. Now, uh, if I choose a function with this form, then basically the charge and zebra, charge density and zebra that I present in the previous slide give me back to the W infinity and zebra. So basically, the the Gerwin, Matton, and Blackman and zebra is the same as uh, 
um, w infinity and zebra and it comes from the chart and t and zebra and this is from this one okay so mostly i mostly finish uh, okay so remember that the when when we define z and z bar in terms of the coordinate we have we, we have the magnetic land here and so basically the dz will give you the multiplication of magnetic land with the complex momentum in dz bar also so in the long wavelength limit when the klb and k by lb much smaller than one and we only consider the lowest order in derivative of the charge density of algebra so here is the algebra the charge density algebra with a lot of, of derivatives now but we just take the the order that with only one derivative then we left with this charge density algebra with this form where we got we got one only one derivative so here you have the are uh, preserving deep. So this thing is nothing but this uh, are preserving deep algebra that I discussed previously. So basically, my 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 point is that uh, when we take the long wavelength limit of the charge density algebra on W infinity algebra or or, or GMP algebra, then you come back to the are preserving deep algebra. Oh, sorry, questions. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. Well, you should take your time, so don't feel rushed. You just okay. say whatever you want to say. Uh, okay. I think at some point you mentioned this W infinite algebra, and which yeah. seems almost on the operator, right? So it has infinite number of operator. And yes. I say it's bosonic in the sense you only impose some commutation relation. For yeah, both bosonic operator. But then yeah. later, when you or write down some Fermi on the operator, you also need to introduce a new operator A, which is anti commuting. Uh, well, it's it's thin, it's 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 thin bosonic in the way that you see, but psi L here is is a two two that sorry row L here is is two uh, combination of two yeah. fermion. Basically, this thing is a bosonic operator. All right. So let me just make sure. So the W even in algebra are generated by two effective fermion operators. Yeah, right. two F two fermion. Yeah. Okay. Right, fine. Thank you. So basically, you can think of this as an in, integral of a psi dagger b and plus one b and plus one psi into the rate of that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here, yeah, yeah. So I'm I successfully show you that the long wavelength limit of the W infinity on the GMP and the brand is a preserving diff. So now, uh, the lowest Landau level projected U1 on W infinity only is the symmetry of lowest Landau level free Hamiltonian in the flat background. So now, if we consider the interacting lowest Landau level Lagrangian, now, without the kinetic term, because the lowest Landau level, so all the kinetic energy is the same. So the actually with this form, the first term and the second term here is nothing but couple the charge density with background uh, scalar potential. And here is the coupling of the, so this thing is, is uh, interaction. Okay. So the question is, can we think of the lowest Landau level projected U1 as a gauge symmetry of this action at long wavelength limit? Or the other question is, can we think of the previous area preserving diff as a gauge symmetry of this action? And the answer is yes in, 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 in some sense. Yeah. So now we promoted the lowest Landau level U1 transformation to have the time dependent. Okay. And here from C, you have the transformation of the, the transformation of the density, and also we have the transformation of the psi, which is time dependent. And from this, you can show that the transformation of the 
So action, who is this for? Okay. So you see that the first line here, because we have the, we have the term uh, A not uh, row LX in the action. So if you allow the A not also transform, that means you gauging, you, you, you allow the background um, field transform with this form. Then this variation of the action will be canceled by this transformation of the background. Okay. And here, if you think of V is some kind of like uh, background external, then basically you can say that the V also can transform to cancel the, the transformation of the dynamical field. So this transformation is just allow the transformation of the psi. And of course, from the transformation of the psi, you have the transformation of rho. But here, if you allow the A not transform, and you also allow the V transform, then you also can cancel the, so we can have the, the theory with the, 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 the invariant under this transformation. And now if you can consider the short rank interaction with the, 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 the interaction between the charge T at X and Y only depend on the like geodesic distance between them with this form. Okay. And, the, and the, by direct calculation, we saw that the second line of the variation, sorry, the se second line here. So the first line can be canceled by allowing the I not transform. The second line can be canceled by allowing the, the matrix transform. It's the same as the transformation that, a uh, preserving transformation that we discussed previously. Okay. So basically we recover the nonlinear as a uh, preserving diff as the uh, gaze uh, symmetry of this action, of this uh, action of this action for the lowest Landau level. Okay. Yeah, so we recover the nonlinear area. And of course, yeah, the long, the long wavelength version give you the long wavelength version of GMP and Zebra, nothing fancy. Replace this with a, a preserving deep, uh, and Zebra and recover the long wavelength version of GMP. Not something that, okay. So here, mostly my last slide. So on flash background, the global symmetry of the short range uh, thing actions that I present, only, uh, only symmetry when you have a specific choice of C the choice of some in GI called the choice of killing vector where you have the transformation doesn't, the deep transformation doesn't change the background. So if you want the transformation A not equal to zero in transformation GI is equal to zero, you only allow the dynamic of field transform. And basically you have the symmetry. And basically the Zender, uh, for, uh, the Zender form of C only have this form where A, alpha, beta, and gamma here are constant. And basically when you separate them out, the first term is nothing but give you the global you want. So second term, so you see that's a d is equal to net j di of, sorry. Yeah, yeah. so it's equal to x i equal to x i plus c i, you see i equal to every deep of this C. So the first term is nothing but it's a global translation. And the last term is nothing but it's global rotation. So basically the area preserving deep that I, that I show here can be think of the long wavelength limit of the lowest Landau level projected U1, the long wavelength limit of W infinity and zebra, the long uh, wavelength limit of ZMP, or oh, it's a gauging of the global symmetry that I discussed from the beginning. That's, so that means it's preserved the total charge, preserve the dipole moment, and preserve the trail of the quadrupole moment. 
yeah so from this we have some like some constraint on the movement of the uh, excitation in fractional quantum hole for example the charge excitation cannot move freely because you have the charge in magnetic field which will trap in the cyclotron motion so you need to push infinitely hard for this to move and the dipole and, and the, the, the neutral excitation in the composite fermion theory is a neutral, but it also has a dipole and it move perpendicular to this dipole moment. So this also the excitation in the fractional quantum hole and the composite fermion is observed in experiment. And another thing is the magnet to roton. That long wavelength limit of magnet to roton is considered as a quadrupole. And with the quadrupole, we can move freely. Okay, so this is my, my conclusion. So the nonlinear uh, higher rank symmetry in the lowest land down level is a uh, area preserving deep. The Wenzi topological term in the GMP and Zebra can uh, reproduce as the churn segment term of the higher rank symmetry. And also because of the, the higher ranks uh, property of the lowest land down level, so the excitation is the low land down level have some kind of like uh, fractonics constraint. So the charge cannot move because it's trapped in the cyclotron orbit. The dipole move only in the perpendicular direction. And the quadrupole is a magnet roton can move freely. And something that I don't have time to discuss is uh, the representing dip in three plus one and also in the conservation of multipole diamond at multipole moment of the skirmio, but I don't have anything like uh, smart thing to say other than what we have in the paper. So I decided to skip this. And also the other the other thing, uh, sorry. Now you see this transformation of the A naught. If you limit yourself in the leading order in derivative, you have some uh, form of the area preserving deep, but you, if you allow all of the, the derivative, the A naught transform in the same way as uh, non-commutative you want. And there's a way to formulate the lowest Landau level of physics as a non-commutative you want theory. Okay, and thanks for attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Zunyan, Kahneman, Kahneman, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. A <laughs> uh, question from the audience, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, hi. Um, you very nicely explained that how a rank two gauge field can generate these differences in the in the metric, right? Essentially, yeah, curvature in the metric comes from that. Is it possible to have the same scenario, but now instead of using rank two to use a rank one, so the standard uh, kind of zero order vector potential? Uh, no, because we need the symmetric tensor, and the nature of symmetric tensor that we have on the background is metric. I see. And then can you say anything more about higher rank theories? I mean, can you make a distinction between say even or odd or any other? No, no, I don't have any smart what to say about it. I think Zuven may know something from the higher moment. But I limit myself to the... What is the, the question again? Okay. The question is, do you have comment on the higher rank? Not just uh, the second. Yeah, I don't know from the fractional common whole systems. No, no, he, he, he may, I think that he may ask about the, the, the higher rank symmetry, not, not only in the lowest land, not only in the fractional one, but it's then, can you have some comment on, on higher rank symmetry? With the conservation of the... Yes, one, one can write it down mathematically. 
artificially control such systems. Yes. Yeah. So in in the top the top in the top I just so people trying to find the physical systems that rely the the higher range symmetry, and in the top I, I just try to convince you that fashion quantum hall is a place that you, you can look at it. Yeah, that's very nice. Oh. Yeah. Um, Yonis, you still have a question? Uh, then if not, uh, okay. thanks, no. Yeah. Thanks. We have one question from Han Chen. Yeah. Um, hello. So thank you for the very nice talk. Um, the so here you're thinking about like having a, an arbitrary background curve background, um, but here you're working with um, vanishing torsion, right? Yeah, vanishing torsion. I see, I see, okay. Um, because apparently there's this uh, torsion anomaly that can also occur that contributes to axial currents uh, in the uh, in the quantum theory. Yeah. But that's a finite temperature, um, so. Yeah, so like, we don't consider this in Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe it's quite complicated to extend yeah. to the theory of distortion. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the question. Thank you. I have a question. Can you say a bit more about the slide you kind of just uh, skipped? about this magneto, magneto roton. Ah, okay. So uh, basically the magneto roton is excitation that's observed experimentally in, in lowest land down level. It's observed experimentally. And this thing is the, the, the gap state that introduced by Gervin McGonan in their paper. And after that people observe is experimentally. And the nature of this magneto, the microscopic nature of this is it's not very well known. And the first idea introduced by Hodain is saying that it's some kind of like excitation of the internal metric. And in my paper with Sun and Woka, we can think of this as acting of the stress tensor operator on ground state that creates the excitation. Uh, that creates a magnetoroton. And in my later paper with Sun and, and Andre Gromov, we show that the magnetoroton is a spin two. And by the, by the idea by Shou Chen Zhang, uh, this is a quadrupole uh, in terms of uh, electric charge. Then in the fracton, uh, fracton, uh, more the seed is free, freely move. And in the in other way to formulate the theory, the effective theory of the fraction itself is something like massive gravity. Massive gravity in the two plus one. It's spin two, it gap, and it's massive gravity. And uh, I also propose uh, uh, experiment idea to to measure the spin. Before they only measure the dispersion relation, they don't know the micro, microscopic structure. But Sun and I propose an idea to measure the spin to confirm it as a spin two and to confirm that you have the massive graviton in the lab. Yeah, but so in, push, in push, just make sure. So which more should I identify as? Spin two excitation is that the, the QL close to zero that one? Is yeah, QL QL close to zero. In uh, in my other paper with Sun, we saw that. So the dispersion relation the proton is well known, but in my uh, but the spin structure doesn't uh, it 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 not it not very well known. And in my paper with Sun, we saw that after the first minimum the the so spin from the positive direction go to the negative direction correspond to the direction of magnetic field, but it's just that's a theory. That's a, so the theory for the roton close to, to zero momentum. It can be thing that's like 
shared tensor I can generate by shared tensor in this line quadruple. It's not it now is not you know, not surprise because you know what happened. But but the dispersion relation is going the opposite way at the QL QL uh, close to zero, which means the these are negative energy state or, or negative energy excitation. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's positive excitation, but it's because it's, it got from the beginning, right? So the energy is still own way positive, it's own way bigger than zero, but it have very weird dispersion relation. And this dispersion relation is the same as the helium, helium four in, so, so there's an excitation called the roton excitation in helium four and Feynman make a theory for them. And basically it had a very similar dispersion relation. Yeah, but it's minimum. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. So, I think that's the story in 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 in, in helium four or something like this. If I remember correctly, we also had some minimum here. And here it's different from the the, the helium four. Here we get a gap from the beginning. Yeah, have the minimum. What would you identify at the QL, QL close zero as the spin two graviton? Or would you uh, describe the oldest curve as a spin two graviton? Just make sure how do you identify them? You no, on, only 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 close to zero. It can be considered as a okay. well defined spin two, and with the, this path is not not very well defined. It's mixed with the different speed. And this is a, a numerical resource. Is a numerical this uh, So this thing is that um, the theory result in my paper with Sun and, and Volker, but uh, you also have the numerical result. Many people do numeric on that to, to, to find the, the roton distortion relation. And also you have to also experiment to measure this. So don't discuss in relation. So it's confirmed by theory, numeric, and also the experiment. And this first, uh, this, this first, uh, this person relation is is in in the Gerwin Magdalene plasma paper. Yeah. So now people interested in this P two and and uh, the group. Of, at Columbia, really try to, to identify the spin two. Should I think about the spin two excitation as just some uh, representation with integer spin two of some iso spin of SU two or SO three, instead of thinking about really a space time symmetry group? I just no. wonder how much. The way I should appreciate this as graviton of a space time or more like an internal iso spin. No, uh, well, in in in, in fractional quantum law, it's a, it's a, it's a GIJ, it's a real GIJ. It's a not 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 a background GIJ, but it's an internal GIJ. So in the biometric theory by by Andre and Sun, then this. The spin two had this, this uh, so the, the fractional quantum hole has the, the, the dynamic, has the massive spin two, and this can be considered as okay. immersion. No problem. Uh, yeah. but, but let me just make one technical, maybe not technical to you, but a question about the representation of symmetry group of the space time or the emergent space time is that the SO2, one or SO spin 2, comma one or, or something like that? What are the group? And then the spin two will be the representation of that group. What, what is that group you are talking about for the spin two? Do you know that? Uh, so the for example, the, in the in the in the three plus one D, we'll talk about spin three comma one or S four three comma one. So the actually 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 this thing also has the requirement that G I J hat the determinant of G I J hat equal to one. So it's unimodular. And basically, Z thing we represent the area preserving deep actually is SL2R. 
Uh, you can file this in the paper, the biometric theory paper uh, by Andre Gromop in, in, in CERN. I don't want to, to, to say, I don't want to say something wrong, okay. but, uh, but, but, but you can see that it's an answer to that. Thank you. Yeah, I can check it out. Thank you very much. More questions from the audience, please. Yeah, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, of course. Um, how important is that you have a fractional uh, whole state and you're seeing the effects on that state from the moment that essentially these corrections to the metric can come about even in non-interacting systems, right? In, in three electrons, is this true? Or can you comment on the importance of the fractional quantum state compared to any other state? So basically, if you don't have the interaction, then uh, basically, the, the, if you have the free theory without interaction, then uh, if you have, if you don't have the interaction, then basically the the matrix when you transform is commute with the Hamiltonian. You don't gain like, any energy from this line. So you, you will have the full, uh, the full W infinity. Yeah. If the, the, the theory is not, uh, if the theory is, it doesn't have the uh, interaction, then, then basically you have the, the full, uh, the full lowest land down level projected you want, then you can have any function, you can choose any function that also uh, commute with the Hamiltonian. Right, but then this doesn't say anything about having or not having um, curvature on, on, on or having a, a G, right? Which essentially tells about curvature. Ah, right, right, right. I, it doesn't tell about the, the coupling with curvature, but, but the coupling with curvature for non-interacting um, theory that sense and that means you need to 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 write the, the, the wave function in curve space. Uh, right. Yeah, you just you just need to write the wave function in curve space and uh, and you have the Landau level. Uh, in, in curve space, and with that interaction, the theory is just coupling the the j. Well, it doesn't uh, have to be a Landau level. It can it can be any. I mean, it, can it, be... it can be any, but but in in, in this talk, I consider the, the the Landau level. And your question sure. is also about Landau level. Sure. I mean, the the point is that this curvature can be induced in states which are not fractional host state in, in any other state? Uh, I think with a strong magnetic field, then basically you, you have the, the, the different um, definition of magnetic field. You have the I, a J minus DJ, a I, that divide by square of G. So this thing is a new definition of magnetic field. And if your theory that has this magnetic field still constant over the, the manifold, even you have the matrix, but you but you also train the A so that the magnet, magnetic field is still constant, then you still have the the the, the, the Landau level in uh, in your manifold, even with curve spec. You just need to make sure that this is, is constant. The new definition of multi field curve space constant, and you still have the, 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 the land level. Yeah, sure. Okay. But, 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 but if you just, just keep the di, j minus dj i equal to constant, then the magnetic field in curve space is not constant, then basically you, you deform the. The Landau level in curve space, but if, if you if you just do this constant, then if you just make this constant, then you still have Landau level. So that's a wave function 
it's not that that doesn't look the same as the wave function that you wrote in uh, in FlashPay. But there's a, a well-defined way to deform the wave function that you have in FlashPay to the wave function in in CurvesPay, such that uh, this is a wave function of the Landau level with constant magnetic field in CurvesPay with this definition. That's a well-defined way to do this. Thanks. Hi, I have a question. Um, sorry if you went over this because I had to step out for a minute, but I was wondering if you could explain the, um, say a bit more about how the volume preserving diffeomorphism group appears in uh, in the context of skirmions and ferromagnets? Ah, so this thing appear because of the following. Uh, I will give you the quick answer. Um, you know that the skirmion in ferromagnets uh, has the, the Berry curvature. And because of the Berry curvature, effectively the skirmion sees the magnetic field. And then basically from the intuition in the, the fractional quantum hole, when the skirmion C magnetic field, you also can reformulate this to, to the area preserving, the, the same area preserving that we have in the fractional quantum hole. That's because you have the skirmion with the buried curvature term. This can be identical to the uh, so the effect is, uh, is, is the same as the particle in magnetic field. So magnetic field now uh, replaced by the Berry curvature. Okay, and um, you, uh, you skipped two plus one D. So is that, could you have the same thing in two plus one instead of three plus one? You can have, you, you can have the, yeah. So in, in the paper, we, we, we describe the three plus one version and uh, the chain formation is look more, more complicated because we have the more spatial index, but you still can have the well-defined chain formation in three plus one. Okay, so, so you're using uh, like the strong coupling limit where the electrons see a, a, a U1 emergent gauge field? Uh, you have, no, so in three plus one, you have the, another field called uh, Clap Ramon field uh, in three plus in, in three plus one you know, Clap Ramon field and if you keep this Clap Ramon field last and you want to have a shunt formation that so in in the low standard level here we we, we consider the shunt formation that keeps the multiple constant but in three plus one you have the uh, field S I J K three in back and if you want to keep this consider the chain formation that keeps this constant is also uh, consider is also correspond to the uh, volume now now is volume uh, preserving deep in three plus one in three dimension and if you want to keep this magnetic field three dimension magnetic field constant then you also have this uh, symmetry I see and to keep this constant do you need like a special skirmion texture uh, no, so the um, we need the uh, how to say uh, the scorpion now is not the, the scorpion is not the, the background the scorpion is not back so the scorpion can be considered as the uh, the electron field in the lowest Landau level and the scorpion is not background. So I see. Okay. the flat background is considered that's the GIJ and something now the new A naught that couple to the, the skirmion density. I see, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's cool. Any more questions? I actually have, um, have a, um, observation, I guess. So here um, in, I think in one of the slides, you said that the U1, so you have two symmetries, right? The Defeo and the U1. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and they're coupled together, right? Because when you make a transformation, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's, it's exactly. together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, my question is when you're computing the generators for um, like the, um, the A and A dagger, yeah. when you're writing the Hamiltonian down in, in terms of those ladders, you're implicitly using the, the Landau gauge, right? Yeah. But when you have Diffeo uh, as well, when you pick a single gauge for the A, does that not automatically also turn on like some kind of curved background? Uh, well, so that, maybe I misunderstood the question, but the thing is that our transformation C also leaves the uh, square of G intact in the um, the so AI intact, so magnetic field it keeps the same, and because AI doesn't change, then I still fix a uh, symmetric case. So then the AI equals to zero. Not that C of AI equals zero. So yeah, in, in C of AI equals to zero. With uh, with uh, sir, no, oh, that's okay. wait, but you C also have, a. yeah, you also have delta C of a naught because so delta C of a naught is non zero. Uh, so if so, the global version, so let me come back to this, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's just like so. With this choose of the so with the transformations that we consider the area area preserving deep that we consider that makes the AI delta AI intact, the delta AI not doesn't. So, but but you see that this is the gauging of the global symmetry, and the global symmetry is the thing that make everything, every background fix, and which correspond to the global uh, global area preserving. So the global area preserving now the uh, the how to say the the lambda cannot be any function. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and in this case, you have everything zero. I mean, every transformation zero. Uh, and this, so this global only including the, uh, only including the global uh, translation and global rotation. But mm -hmm. so this thing is a, is, is a, is, 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 it's a formalism in the Newton Cartan. But basically you see that in 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 in, in my section here. Uh, in my section here, uh, all of them like the yeah, so my, maybe my, my last slide. Uh, all of them can represent with the only on the lowest Landau level projected U1. So in this mm -hmm. case. It includes uh, the U1 and includes uh, translation and rotation. So one of them can be come from the, so I have one function to represent one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, because here you, you say that, okay, you're making a specific choice of the coming vector, which corresponds to the lambda parameter that you've chosen such that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you know, okay, I see, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So in essence, you're sort of in essence, you're sort of picking one one page orbit. And, yeah. and then okay, okay, I see. Yeah. Okay. Because in general, like if you want to keep the default completely general, yeah. Yeah, then I would expect the full 
gauge the, the full algebra of gauge transformations to be a semi-direct product between the U1 and the detail. And in that yeah. case, um, it will be kind of, right? Because, you know, you know that your gauge field has to transform with um, C, like for generic killing uh, vector C. Yeah, so, but, but with a choice of C. Yes, yep. So that, yeah, so you, you, you think about the, Z thing is a zener, the Z thing is a zener uh, uh, deep. The zener deep, of course, we trade all the field. But if you fix the deep with this form, mm -hmm. you fix the yep. deep to have the area preserving. And with the comp compensates that you want gate, then you can keep the delta AI in zero. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Like you're you're picking a specific orbit in the in the whole gauge algebra. Um so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I see. So in this orbit in particular, you can just pick any gauge for your vector potential. Uh -huh. And nothing will happen essentially. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, ah, okay. So you're fixing a background then in this case. So, so, so the, the, the symmetry, that means the thing that you only allow to change the dynamic of field, but doesn't allow to change the background. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so that called the symmetry. So when you gaze it, you allow the background once you change, but it's the gazing. It's not the symmetry. You see. So it's the same like in, the, in, in GR where you have the sphere, then you have some kind of like angular momentum preserving because you have some killing vector. It's a deep transformation mm -hmm. that preserves the background. So the, the, yeah, the but, deep but, is chaos. Right, right. Rotation. But when you want to study like, for example, semi-classical theories of GR, and then maybe you want to quantize, you know, the, the, uh, the entire charge algebra, then like you have to entire, you, uh, you have to gauge the entire. Um, yeah, so you know, in this case, you something. need yeah. to think of like, uh, matrix is not background, but it's dynamical. Mm -hmm. If you want to do this. But the other way to think about our symmetry is our symmetry uh, when get the requirement for the um, yeah, yeah. So effective action, when you integrate out the matter field, you generate the effective action with only the, the, the background field and, and, the, and the symmetry here that we, we, we keep some, some, some like constraint on the effective action of the background mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. And one of the example is the Chern Simon field to add to the, the Chern Simon action that give you the, the Wenzi term. Mm -hmm. So the requirement on the effective action when you integrate out the dynamic field. And one of them is uh, the Chern Simon, which is uh, Wenzi. Okay. okay. I see. Yeah, sorry for the rather naive question, I guess. But thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank Yang Zunian for a great seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And people, if they have a question, you have a question, you can still stay. And let's end the, this uh, live.